Uh, specifically for a council agenda items which are to be considered by council at the next ordinary meeting of council. Agenda forums... Councillors, please. Agenda forums are not a decision-making forum. They provide an opportunity for councillors to be equally informed and seek additional information on matters prior to presentation of such matters to the next ordinary meeting of council for formal consideration and decision. Please note that this meeting is being live streamed and the recording will be also archived and made available on the council's website after the meeting. If you choose to participate in the meeting during public question time or deputation time, it is assumed that your consent is given for the audio to be recorded. Please keep your comments respectful to council and other members of the community. Visual images of the public will not be captured. Councillors, given that we've already been in this room for one hour, this meeting will be restricted now, so how I, I hope I want to get through all these deputations because they're important. So I'm allowing five minutes per deputation, three minutes of questions after, and I will ask for indications at the, end of, at the end of that three if there's any further questions and if the deputation, the person giving the deputation is um, happy to wait in the ante room and we get through it quick enough, we'll have an opportunity to call him back for questions. So, uh, attendance and apologies, we've already done. Yeah, I just want to point out some inaccuracies in the agenda before we go much further. For deputations? Uh, yes, thanks. I just want to point out um, page four, item 13.4, that uh, those three deputations, which are written, but they're actually not um, in respect of 8 James Street, Guildford. They're actually in respect of the Campasic Road tree removal. Okay. I've checked that. Thank you. Right. Thank you for that, Councillor Carolina. We accept that typo. Attendance and apologies. Um, attendance and apologies, Councillor. So we have um, Councillor Podovnik, um, who is absent. We made an announcement earlier this evening that she has taken leave at, uh, due to the sad passing of her mother, and we again send all our condolences to her family and best wishes and remind her that um, our hearts are present with her and her family at this point in time. Um, disclosure of interest, interest councillors. Uh, Mr Mayor, Councillor Rod Henderson um, has uh, expressed an impartiality in item 1.C1.4 and that is an ordinary member of the VCA 88.5 FM. Uh, Councillor Bryce Perry has expressed a financial interest in item 2.8, that's the VAR report on the reconstruction of the materials recovery facility. Um, his employer has a significant contract with CleanAway. Also, he's ex also expressed an impartiality in item C 3.8, lot 87 Keene Street and lot 89 the Crescent Midland, as he used to work for the proposed purchaser. Uh, the Mayor, Councillor Bailey, has expressed uh, an impartiality in item C 1.4, that's the um, um, radio station 88.5 Allenbrook Community Radio in that he is a member of 88.5 Councillor Kate McCulloch also expressed an impartiality in the same item as she is also a member of uh, 88.5 Mr Mayor, and I'll oh, sorry, one more from um, Councillor Zanino um, item C 3.8 uh, lot um, 87 Keene Street um, he's expressed an impartiality as his business partners own land on the Crescent in Midland, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Mr CEO. Any others, councillors or staff? Thank you. Um, questions for, new no for which due notice has been given? I have nil. Questions without notice? Nil. Reports and motions for previous notice has been given. Petitions. And the first deputation is on item 7.2, petition containing 125 signatures to request acquire land and create a greenfield corridor and retain natural bushland area of Woodbridge. And the speaker is Miss Deering. So Miss Deering, if you could just come to the microphone and you have five minutes. Thank you. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Lynn Deering. I uh, live at 51 Homestall uh, Road in Woodbridge and I deliver this deputation on behalf of the 135 residents who have signed the petition. Um, I'd like to draw you, your attention to a diagram that you should have in front of you that came with, um, uh, that's been sent out to councillors, which has a picture of the area that I'm um, going to speak of. So you should have that in your council notes or papers. Um, yes. No, it's a... We're sent, we're sent it's, by email, Mr Mayor. 
Um, it was out, sent in, and it's a photograph of the area that I'm speaking to, so it'll give you an understanding of, you know, uh, yeah, what I'm actually saying. The the land that I'm referring to, and how it sort of connects up to that bigger picture. All right. Um, so I'll give you a few minutes. I'm not sure when this starts. Or uh, yesterday, two thirty nine p.m. Keep going. So do I keep going? Is my yep. time? Am I running out of time? Clock is now? ticking. Keep going. All right. So um, uh, on the diagram that I've provided, I'm wanting to uh, point out that I'm referring to privately owned lots 170, 171 and 172, and they are indicated in red. And then um, also I'm referring to what they uh, call is the uh, Swan River Trust, which is indicated in yellow, uh, which make up key pieces of what we call the Green Corridor Jigsaw. Uh, this diagram is also useful because you can see how these pieces of land link to the Woodbridge Meadow and then how it flows through to the uh, Metro Land Scheme, uh, which is designated Parks and Recreation. And you can also see how it connects through to the Midland Workshops. So it forms this green, na natural green corridor that actually exists uh, there. So our petition requests the council to investigate ways of securing the blocks of land to maintain the green corridor between Swan River Trust land, indicated on the diagram that I've sent, Guildford and Midland, and in doing so, protect and preserve existing wildlife habitat for future generations creating a conservation corridor, as uh, would be termed by the City of Swan. There are four main reasons I'd like to share with you for why the Council should support our petition. We need to secure this portion of land previously mentioned, as it is a jigsaw piece that fits between the existing nature corridor and the residential groups Guildford and Woodbridge. It connects two naturally flowing heritage areas and offers our community and others access to gentle, traffic-free wild space that is not bike or people busy or traffic congested. Huh? Secondly, securing this pocket of land gives our city's vision to which it aspires to be a connected and cohesive community. The inclusion of these pieces of land-linked community form a corridor all the way through to the Midland Workshops. Recognising this land as a green corridor offers residential and tourism appeal, provides many and varied economic, social and environmental benefits, and aligns well with our strategic outcomes and values as a city. Thirdly, this pocket of land has been a hidden and protected sanctuary for local wildlife. On our doorstep, it has offered sanctuary to quanda, echidna, frog and bird populations and has enabled large 80-year-old tree growth, which is a rare and precious commodity in today's world. Areas once deemed safe and tucked away are now being placed under pressure. Unfortunately, minute, development is encroaching upon some of the last wild habitats in our suburb. Surprisingly, council policies presently place little recognition on the value attributed to large growth trees or bushlands, either in replacement value or as preservation gain in developments. There are no requirements to maintain existing green areas or to protect the city's overall tree canopy, unlike many progressive councils. 80-year-old trees are not replaceable. We must and need to place higher value upon our natural heritage rather than taking it for granted. Recognising wildlife habitat and wild space preservation as a response to the retention of amenity and climate change is meeting the City of Swan strategic plan outcomes. Fourthly, communities have come out of COVID-19 situation more aware of the importance of green spaces for both mental health and as a climate change priority. Thank you, Ms. Supporting Thank our five proposals. Minutes. Supporting our proposal would demonstrate a commitment from Council to preserve areas local communities deem as necessary, Thank showing you. us you are hearing us and Thank are you, sharing our values. Thank you. Thank Councillors, you. get a couple of minutes of quick questions. Yep, go on, Myself? Yes, uh, questions to staff, actually. Okay, have you got any questions to Ms Deering? Uh, no, not at the moment. Any Thank questions you. to Ms Deering, Councillors? Thank you, Ms. Deering.
quick one to staff, Councillor Coley. The, the area that uh, Ms Deering was talking about um, through you, Mayor, is that this, does that include any of the area that uh, is part of 4.6 filling of land at, in, within Plymouth Street, Woodbridge? Mr Russell. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, for the diagram. Steering might know that answer, Mayor, I'm not too sure. Uh, uh, yes, yes it does, 170, 172, which is the item we're dealing with, yes. Does the uh, submission of the uh, petition have any impl implications for our consideration of this issue and of item 4.6? Well, well, that's up to the council, Mr Mayor, but um, the petition, the, the application is by the owner to fill the land, a small portion of, 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 of the land for the purposes of a house. Um, it's somewhat a separate motion or a separate proposal for council to look at, making a resolution to seek to acquire the land, which would be by treaty with the, with the owner. If the owner is not willing to do so, then it doesn't obviate the council from having to make a yes or no decision on this application. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Time for one more. Okay, one more, Councillor Scanlon. Oh, I just wanted to move to accept the petition. I realise we haven't done that yet. Oh, yeah. okay, we accept the petition. Councillor Lucas. Uh, thank you. I just want to uh, make uh, Miss Deering know that uh, the email I received yesterday didn't have an attack wall. It's got a paper clip which shows there should be an attachment. I can't open it. Happy to give you my card so I can um, consider it before okay. next week's meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Scan, we don't have to move that we accept the petition. You can present that at next week. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Deering. Okay, that now takes us to the next deputation, which is uh, item 2.2, the adoption of the City of Swan Bike Plan Network. And uh, Mr Merson. Yeah, Mr. Five minutes, Mr Merson. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Matthew Merson. I'm president of the Janebrook Community Association and have been representing the members and residents of Janebrook for the past 10 years. Janebrook is a suburb of uh, just over 4,000 residents. Over 250 are financial members of the Community Association. The suburb has grown substantially in the last five years with the Highland Reserve development and we'll see further lots released with Landcorp development in progress at the moment at Highland Ridge Estate. I would like to take the opportunity tonight to talk to your upcoming agenda item to adopt the City of Swan Cycle Network Plan. Specifically, I would like to talk about the Stratton to Midland Link, Project A, as part of the overall plan detailed on the map located at page 71 of the document. Janebrook currently does not form part of the proposed initial network plan, and our request is that Council defers its decision on this item so that due consideration can be given to the inclusion of an extension of the route to Janebrook. I note that at Appendix C, Ultimate Network Map, on page 122, the intention is to provide a future route down Talbot Road, named as Route 36. Our request is that the initial construction of the Stratton to Midland link includes cycle paths along Talbot Road from the intersection of Murchison Road, Jane Brook, to the roundabout at the daycare centre and then follow Farrell Road to Lewis Jones Cross in Stratton. The extension will add three kilometres to the network but will not only give access to the 4,000 plus residents of Jane Brook to this network but also to thousands of potential residents in the Swan View area also. Currently, the dangers of cycling on the local roads preclude residents from commuting, utilising micro-mobility options. The addition of the cycleway, as described, would allow connections from Jane Brook to the Stratton Shopping Centre, the Stratton Community Hall, the skate park and bike jump area for the kids, the primary school, and allow a connection to Midland Central, the shopping centre and the Midland train station. These facilities are not available in Jane Brook. There is plenty of available space along Talbot and Farrell Roads to incorporate this cycle path. Our residents and members have expressed their concerns on the dangerous nature of commuting around the local area for many years now, and this would make a huge difference to connecting Jane Brook with adjoining suburbs and to the heart of Midland. I trust you will review the proposal and incorporate Jane Brook in this plan. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr Merson. Any questions of Mr Merson? Councillor Coley. Um, thank you for your deputation. Could I ask that you distribute that around. Um, I might have a minor amendment to this document, to this motion, so I'd 
like to consider incorporating yours as well, if that's possible. Certainly. Thank you. Councillor Johnson. Yeah, mine was the same to us, Mr Merson, if you could uh, send us a, a map or a description of the proposed route. Yep, certainly. Thank you. Councillor Scanlon. Thank you for your presentation. I really appreciate you coming down to describe the situation that um, residents are facing. Can I ask you, um, currently, residents in Jane Brook, if they want to travel to Midland, which is the nearest CBD centre, shopping, etc., how do they travel by bike? Do they have to go on Talbot Road? Yeah, pretty much. It's either 2J Road or... And 2J Road. Road's so dangerous. Yeah, correct. It's incredibly dangerous. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Talbot Road, yep. also... Yeah, it's, pretty it's dangerous. It's not. Yeah. I, and, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. No, and there's actually a very dangerous spot between Dongra Circle and the daycare centre, yep. which unfortunately wasn't part of the upgrade on the road a little bit further on that was finished okay. about eight months ago, and it's very, very dangerous along that section. It's about a 500-metre um, stretch but, that you wouldn't want to ride along. No. No, I actually really wouldn't want to. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Any further questions? Thank you, Mr Merson. Thank you. It brings us now to the next item, which is item 2.4, the childcare premises and community purpose at lot 10019 Hullway, Beachborough. And the first speaker is the Honourable Dave Kelly, MLA member for Bassendine. Mr Kelly, you too only have five minutes in this court. Sure. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to be here again. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, look, I just want to again stress to Council the importance of this project. Brockman House is an amazing organisation, delivers incredible services to Beach Borough. Their current accommodation is quite appalling. Prior to the last state election, the city came to me as the local member, sought support for this project to be funded by the state government. Uh, the city had gone through in consultation with Brockman House a uh, consultation about a proposed pro possible sites. Uh, the, uh, the site that was put to me uh, was uh, the site on Hull Park. So I secured, at a time when the state's budget was in a pretty ordinary state, still is, mind you, a $5 million commitment from the state government to build this centre. We've been working closely with the city ever since. It's widely supported in the community. I haven't, in nearly four years, I haven't had a single person from the community that I'm aware of contact my office and raise issues about this project. It has all been one-way traffic. So I'm just here. I understand you've got to go through various processes. I just want to make, uh, reinforce the importance of this project to the community and to the state government. I've got lots of other things in the city of Swan that I would like to be able to support you in getting funding from the state government. But I've had $5 million that I keep having to ask the Treasurer to keep in the budget and not spend it on something else because uh, I keep telling him the City of Swan will eventually get this project uh, on the go. Um, uh, but, you know, it can't, can't go on forever and it does hinder me as the local member to advocate for other issues. I've had various councillors from the City of Swan come and ask me about other projects that they would like state government support for. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to me uh, when you've got a fabulous organisation which are, are in org accommodation from the 1980s. You've got the state government offering to build the City of Swan a replacement facility on a site that the city has recommended. Uh, I can't see any reason why it shouldn't just uh, go ahead. So. Thank you for those of you who have worked uh, considerably on getting this project up. Council officers have been very uh, professional and helpful in the way that they've dealt with this issue. If councillors have got any issues between now and next week, come and talk to me about it. Uh, but I just want to reinforce, they're a fabulous organisation. They need a, a better accommodation. State government wants to pay for it. Um, we just want to get the project uh, on the go. So thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr Kelly. Any questions? Mr Kelly. Councillor Scanlon. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you so much for coming down to give that deputation on behalf of Brockman House. It's wonderful and they are a great organisation. Fabulous. My question that I wanted to ask you is, um, what do you see as being the opposition to the um, childcare centre being developed at Hull Park? What Look, is the concern? The only issue that's been raised with me by some councillors um, has been the issue of 
uh, the, the location is part of Hull Park, so there's a, a small loss of public open space. Now, you know, the, the location that has been chosen, the city looked at a variety of locations. Uh, my understanding, so this is the one that was chosen. Uh, the alternative that's been put forward at a late point by some councillors is another bit of public open space elsewhere in the city. So I don't... Just always someone wants to interrupt. Always, yeah. So there's always trade-offs in this, in this process. But, you know, the city went through a uh, public consultation on where it should be, chose this site. Uh, I actually think it's a good site. Um, it's on a main road. It's close to the shopping centre. The other site that's been proposed is nowhere near the shopping centre. Uh, so it's always... You have to balance these things. If the city was to refuse this, pro this project on the basis of this site, you'd basically have to go back to square one and would put this site project back years and you may well jeopardise the funding. So I'm happy if any councillors have got issues around the location, I'm happy to go out and take them. You can have a look at the, uh, the sites. I'm happy to work and the alternatives that were put forward. But that's the only substantive issue. There's always going to be someone who's unhappy about some extra cars or something or other, but every civic building um, has those issues, and my understanding is this, the town's officers have worked, the city's officers have worked through those issues, and it's one of the things you deal with whenever you build a public building. Follow on, please. Um, just want to ask you if you're aware of the percentage of public open space of that park that will be lost. Oh, look, I'm sure the, the city's officers can, okay. can deal yeah. with that. But that location has been out there in the public domain for now four years. Mm -hmm. I've not had anyone... I have lots of people come to me complaining about things the state government is doing, uh, complaining about things that various councils are doing around public open space whether it be Bayswater, you guys or Bassendean, mm. I've never had anyone, a community resident, complain about this project because of the, um, the location. You know, I, People beat, beat down my door every time uh, a significant tree gets lost, mm. especially in the town of Bassendean, I've got to say. This project not had that same response. Could it be that people are just not aware <coughs> of the project, though? Well, the city has gone through an extensive consultation. I mean, okay. it, it's the city's job, role, to, to do that public consultation. Okay. You've gone through a number of rounds of that consultation. So, I mean, I can't tell the city mm. how they are to consult. That's mm. not my role. All I can tell you is a lot of people are, have spoken to me in favour of this project. Mm. I haven't had anyone. Um, come to me and say, God, you can't, you can't put it on Hell Park because we're going to lose a couple of small trees. Um, I often go into back to save trees. I love trees. Mm. I love public open space. But it's always a trade-off. These people are gold for that community. Mm. Absolutely gold. And they work under the most... If you ever go and have a look at oh, what I've, they do, yeah. um, the, the most crowded quiz night I've ever been to was in their centre. Yep. Um, it, it's just completely dysfunctional. You've got an opportunity to, to, to remedy that and let them grow. People at Beachborough need these services, especially now. And over the coming years, the demand for that centre is going to get more and more. So, you know, if there was a plan B, it should have been put on the table by this council. Well, you should have come up with a, a, a better option, a better location. But it was the, t the city who picked that location, and that's the way it's, it's rolled. OK. Thank, Thank you. you. Minister, I'm, we're out of questions at the moment. I need to move on. Excuse me. I'm actually an Alton Ward councillor, and I'd like to ask some questions. Well, you Thank you. A quick question, please. Yes, thanks. Thanks, Dave. Agenda. Um, I just wondered, actually, whether you'd um, received any complaints about traffic congestion around Hull, Hull Way and um, the shopping centre there? Uh, specifically in relation to this project? No, no, just whether you've received complaints about traffic congestion 
on whole way um, around the shopping centre and that whole sort of whole park and whole way and the shopping centre area? Not that I'm aware of, um, Councillor. I'd have to go back and have a look because I've been the member for seven years, so um, I can't categorically say I haven't uh, had an, an issue raised with me. But what I normally do with those sort of congestion issues is I say, look, it's a local government issue, so you need to sort it out with the local government. Uh, and so in the same way that... I mean, I can't sort out congestion issues. It's for the city to do that. So that's normally how I deal with it, unless it's absolutely egregious, and then I'd take it up with the town myself. All right, Thank thanks. Thank you, Mr Kelly. Um, we'll and no, actually, yes, I'm sorry. I, no, 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 I do no, need no. to ask... Uh, I am the Alto Ward councillor, and I need to know this I'm for, fully aware. I'm for fully people aware. who have asked me to do so. Councillor, I'm fully Excuse aware me. of where you represent, but I laid out the format for this meeting prior to, and if you didn't understand it, you should have raised um, it. Thank you, Mr Kelly. Mr we'll Matt, I'd like to move no, that I'm Councillor uh, <laughs> Catalan will be allowed to continue asking no, her questions. We've already done that. Thank you. Mr Kelly, if you don't mind hanging around till later, if we can get through this and perhaps come back and answer questions at the end. Sure. Thank you. The next speaker on this item is Ms Kaisa in a test switch. I think you got your name right. OK. No worries. In that case, Ms Jenny Burnside. Thank you for hearing me today. Um, my name is Jenny Burnside and I'm the chairperson speaking on behalf of Brockman House. So normally I'd have lots of children here um, and little baby brochosauruses in here to support, but COVID, social distancing, you just got me today. Um, in designing the new facility, oh, before I begin, less than 9%, by the way, of public open space. Um, in designing the new facility, uh, we have had to prioritise the functionality of the spaces and consider the needs of the centre users. After much consideration and feedback, we identified one car park would not be suitable. People wanting to access the community support services would have to walk quite a distance from the car park located on the other side, um, on the op opposite side of the building. Many participants who would need access to the community support entrance include seniors, uh, people with disabilities, people carrying really heavy items for the programs that they run, parents with children, and they'd have to walk along the main road there. Um, we've had to discard much desired space elsewhere to accommodate for the additional car park, but we strongly feel that this will be of significant benefit to many. I'm aware that there's still a few councillors determined for Brockman Community Centre to relocate from Hull Park. However, today's about an additional car park, not the relocation of the building. Uh, Council have already discussed this matter thoroughly on two separate occasions um, and approved this site for the Brockman Community Centre. And this was on the 13th of March 2019 and the 22nd of January this year. To bring this issue forward again would just seem, it, it would seem unjust and would have me question those opposing councillors' personal agendas on this matter, especially since they don't reside in the Altone area. We've worked in collaboration with the City of Swan for over 15 years to advocate for the community to develop a purpose-built facility. During this time, we've had a feasibility study completed and reviewed and redone to ensure the building would be situated at an appropriate location. At the Agenda Forum in January, uh, the 15th of January this year, Dave Kelly stated that if this project was delayed, Brockman House would lose state government funding. To demonstrate the community's continued support uh, for the new centre located at Hull Park, we'd like to, uh, well, I'd like to resubmit the previous petition of over 200 supporters. Over 70% live in the city of Swan area, which was entered into the meeting on the 15th of January. Also, a petition of an, another 124 signatures, again, over 70% live in the city of Swan supporting Brockman House being built on the proposed location. Both petitions include residents in close proximity to Hull Park, um, residents from outside of Beachborough who live, um, uh, who travel to Brockman House, and also local businesses in the area. Thank you. Okay, questions, Councillor Lucas. Uh, thank, you. thank you for your deputation. Um, what would it mean to Brockman House if the state government did withdraw its $5 million funding? Mm. We'd lose everything. Um, refusal of the motion put forward would cause more delays, unnecessary expenditure of state government funding and likely cessation of the whole project. Um, it would be a great loss to us and the community. Um, could result in the dissolution of Brockman House completely. We're currently in a building about to be sold out from underneath us and it is no longer fit for purpose and we're not in a financial position to commercially rent either. Um, community support services are needed now more than ever, um, especially at the moment, and it's so valuable and 
as we try to recover from COVID-19. So many other services in our catchment, they've lost their funding um, and will soon cease to operate. So Brockman House was awarded the um, Empowering Communities Program funding. As we deliver high quality life and um, life-changing support to those in need, without Brockman House and its valuable services, the Outone community would suffer a detrimental loss and we would not be able to provide the childcare, the community support and mental health facilities that the community so desperately needs and has had access to for nearly four decades now. Um, so as a community and in the current climate, we can't lose this valuable service. And if we lost that funding, we'd lose it all. Thank you. Councillor Catalano, you're next. <coughs> yes, thank you. Um, I know that there are a lot of traffic issues, even though I don't live in the ward. I am aware that there are a lot of traffic issues along Har Way. And um, I want to, your, what do you think uh, the extra traffic coming in and out of this centre is going to, how that's going to impact on the current traffic um, situation? Yep, thanks for that question. I don't believe that there will be any extra traffic um, or any extra congestion there. Um, at the moment, the, the centre's not going to get any bigger. We, we might have a couple of extra services or a couple of extra classes like messy play or, um, you know, quilting or something like that. But ultimately, the new Aldi that's going in is going to cause more congestion than a childcare centre and community centre. So I don't believe that there will be any extra congestion, any um, extra traffic there. At the moment, people come in through either Small Street or um, Holway. Um, and they have limited parking spaces where we are now. So if we were to have both car parks there, there's two entrances, which would then alleviate a lot of the traffic flow because they have to travel along our own road regardless of which entrance they come in. You don't think that um, the close proximity to Altone Road is a problem? The what, sorry? Close proximity to Altone Road is a problem in terms of getting in and out of the site, you know, the um, centre? Well, people would have the option of either Small Street or on Altone Road, and I think that might be up to the town planners or the um, main traffic or main roads um, to decide whether that's a suitable entrance or exit point. Um, I'm not part of main roads, so I don't really know about any of that sort of um, yeah, traffic ins and outs of it. Councillor Coley, you're next. Thank you. Thanks for your deputation. I just want to make sure that you've had a, you and other members of Brockman um, management have had a chance to go over the plans and are happy with what's there. If there's any changes, I'm just suggesting if there's any changes, any minor improvements that you need to make, this would be the time to bring them up, uh, raise them with all three councillors and we could consider them prior to approving anything. Yep, so we've been through the design process. Um, that is the actual location whereabouts on Hull Park. Um, it was suggested at one point that it be up near the pub, which is inappropriate. It was um, suggested near the Westbourne. So with the plans that are before us now, that's what we're looking at. Is if, you, if you've got the opportunity within the next few days or be oh. before next Wednesday and you've come up with something you'd like to change, then we could certainly consider it in that time frame. Yep, no worries. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Councillor Lucas. I can elaborate on the question asked by Councillor, both Catalano and Kylie, if allowed, Mr Mayor, relating yep, yep. to traffic. Some time, yep. Um, the current, uh, the latest traffic data from Whole Way was 1,020 vehicles per day. It's a single carriageway in each direction, and obviously there'd be a couple of hundred of those vehicles perhaps attending uh, Brockman House. By removing Brockman House from Whole Way to the Elton Road side of the park, Altone Road is dual carriage in each way with a large medium strip. It carries over 12,650 vehicles per day. Um, so Altone Road is actually built for extra traffic. The reduction uh, for any traffic complaints on Whole Way, this would actually assist Whole Way residents. But uh, as was rightly pointed out, there's a new Aldi store going in at the shopping centre um, and um, I believe they still require the current Brockman House site for additional parking to alleviate the expected customers that they'll be getting there. So um, Altone Road's built for the extra traffic. There'll be two entrances. In fact, it was part of Brockman House uh, submission that we're here again tonight because they believe that having one large car park would be to the detriment of particularly elderly people who carry their sewing machines and knitting machines 
into the community side. So they've decided to build two car parks, one at the north, one at the south end of the building, um, to alleviate a lot of those issues. Mothers carrying babies instead of the full length. They've got a choice of car parks. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lucas. Thank you, Ms Burnside. OK, we now move to our next deputation. Ms Burnside, if there's any further questions, do you want to hang around if we've got time at the end? OK, if there's any more, thank you. Next is um, 4.6 of the filling of land at lot 171 and portions of lot 2 and lot 172 Plymouth Street, Woodbridge, and Mr Fitzpatrick. Good evening, Mayor, Councillors and staff. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak briefly to this item. Um, well before my family purchased this uh, subject land in 1986, the spur line of the railway to the south of our land was constructed. The subject land was cleared of all vegetation, graded and used for access, by the cons uh, for access and a lay-down area by the railway constructor. And the current gravel access track that runs down the road reserve uh, is effective front boundary for our blocks. This was the land that we purchased, um, but uh, post-construction there was no remediation. Um, most of the current vegetation on that land is either regrowth after the railway clearing or invasion by exotic species. And I, I just give you that bit of background by way of response to the idea of it uh, being populated by um, endangered species or, or significant uh, animals. Um, there is no shelter there for them. It is basically open land. We've cleared it all out. There's a, a few remnant trees. So there's nothing for them to eat. There is no shelter for them. Um, and in our 34 years there, we haven't seen any of the, uh, any large animals. It's all lizards and cockroaches and so forth. Um, we purchased the, uh, the land uh, and the adjoining property, 51 Homesdale Road, which the previous speaker came from, um, and we subsequently sold to them. But um, we've continually used and maintained that land, preparing it for residential development as our finances would permit. We've spent considerable funds on, obviously, city rates, water corp rates, insurance and so on. But we've also improved the access to, uh, by installing a driveway, which was approved by the city. We've uh, also cleared out all the invasive species. So um, additionally, managed to convince the city of Swan to reroute the road drainage, which was uh, falling onto our land. Um, and as a result, we now have a parcel of land that finally presents as a, an attractive, open, parkland location uh, ready for development. So we're simply seeking approval to do that. Um, there's no impact on the streetscape. Um, we've, we've taken advice from McDowell, McDowell Affleck engineers and as you've heard, we've been to, uh, sorry, or read in the report, we've been to council for approval for the driveway and also for blocks previously. So we're well aware of the concerns. Um, we feel like uh, we, well, we engaged with Council first in November 2019 and feel that every angle um, has been given due consideration inclusive of the relevant agencies and the local community. But notwithstanding the due process, I'd just like to make the point that we purchased the land as R20 zoning, uh, R20 zone residential land with the intention of developing it and have been working towards this goal. Um, I've read the report to Council and uh, have no concerns with the content of the proposed resolution or the conditions other than Condition 12, and I would presume that I should follow that up with the, the staff of the city. Um, that was all I wanted to say. If, if you could guide me as to how I deal with Condition 12. Um, Okay, well, you could probably follow that with Phil Russell unless the council wants to deal with it. Um, Councillor Johnson, you got a question? Yeah, I was going to ask 
that exact question. So can you read out, tell us more about Condition 12 and what you don't like about it? Um, condition 12 is the um, uh, Palmilli gas pipeline. There is an easement across the western boundary of, of the, the block, which comes in a few metres. But uh, Condition 12 says, prior to commencement of any works on the land within 50 metres of the transmission easement. So they're adding a, another shaded area outside of the easement area and saying uh, a construction plan must be submitted and approved by the City of Swan in consultation with the gas transmission pipeline licensee. Now I'm a little unclear about why they're stepping outside their easement and just what is involved in getting this further level of approval. Um, I don't have a problem with what their concerns are, but um, those concerns have been there ever since we've held the land and uh, doing fire breaks and other things, we have spoken with them and uh, you know we're not going to be doing any of those things. We're just building a, a sand pile, basically. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, would it be good at this point to get Mr Russell to explain that point? Why um, yeah, well, you can that? ask him if there are any further questions of Mr Fitzpatrick yeah. first, and then we'll go to staff. Councillor Scanlon. Thank you for coming in and giving your deputation. I just wanted to um, just ask you about the fill. So um, uh, the fill will be clean fill brought in to the area. Yes. You mentioned sand, you're building um, a sand pile. Um, I just wanted to ask you if um, you would be in agreement to um, providing council with the company that you will be using to bring in the fill and a declaration that is clean fill from them. Sure. That's, I, I understand that to be a requirement that uh, I would have to meet at any time to certify that it's clean fill. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any further questions to Mr Fitzgerald or we go to staff? Councillor quick one. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Mr. Fitzgerald. As you know, some of the uh, some of your neighbours think that uh, have expressed an interest in the city buying your land uh, in order to turn it into a park. Can you tell us what you think of that? Well, <laughs> uh, it, it, I believe it first started in 2005. The idea of buying the land. Um, unfortunately, no one engaged with us at that time, but um, they did engage with us just recently. Um, I. I suppose I'm a little sceptical about whether that would be uh, a pragmatic idea, um, A, because I can't see that it joins anything except two railway lines, and I don't think you know, that's wildlife friendly. Um, it would be expensive because uh, I would be looking for an exchange on commercial terms, and I'm sure that the city of Swan's got uh, better things to spend its money on than acquiring that land. I don't, you know, it, it's characterised as a, a piece in the jigsaw, but, um, you know, it's really uh, wedged between a road, the back of some houses, and a railway line. So, you know, there are no kangaroos or bandicoots on that land. It's, it's wide open space, as I said in my introduction. Um, they'd be running in the gauntlet, any small uh, animal like a bandicoot getting out in the open there. And then they've got to contend with the railway lines. Um, but if you were dead keen, make me an offer. <laughs> I thought that was coming. Okay, Mr. Russell, you heard a query from Councillor Johnson. I have, Mr. Mayor. If I'm oh. off, I refer it to my colleague, Ms. Okay. We are. We are, we have got a little bit of time up to sleep with two deputations to go. So, if you could give us, where is he? A quick. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Answer. Um, in terms of Condition 12, that's been imposed um, purely as a referral requirement from the Parmelia Gas Pipeline Authority. So they're just reflecting um, their requirements in terms of just making sure that any construction doesn't inhibit the actual gas pipeline easement. Um, so if there's any portions of that that you're not sure of, that you're not clear of, perhaps we can seek some clarity um, from them directly in answer to your queries between now and the council meeting. So, so uh, I shouldn't be thinking of it as another hurdle that I have to jump over to get approval? Not necessarily. It's been placed as a condition prior to commencement of work, so it would still enable you to get your building permit. But between, I guess, that next step and then actually physically starting the works on site, we just need to nut out those details just to make sure that the way that you're constructing it isn't going to impact the easement. 
and who prepares the plan? Do I prepare that or do you? Correct. The city? Yeah, you would. Yeah. Okay. Perhaps you can follow that up tomorrow. Okay, we've still got two deputations to go. Okay, well, we might hold those to the end if we've got time. Or you can email Mr. Russell tomorrow. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Appreciate it. Mayor, thank you. point of order. I feel that some councillors are allowed more time as though their questions, their statements regarding an item on council are more valuable to your ears than others. No, well, that's not true, councillor, so. Well, I do believe it is. Councillor Catalano was not allowed to ask a question, yet yeah, not five minutes time. later, Councillor Lucas was allowed to and give a five-minute statement. Still had time. OK, so now I've got listed now Miss Amanda Beckett, but Miss Beckett, you've already given a deputation, I believe. Okay, well, given you've already deputation, which is the crux of it, I'll just hold you to last see what time we've got at the end. It takes us now to item C1.4, which is the revocation just motion. On, on that, Mayor, it related to a separate motion that I've got before Council. It is on the same issue, yeah, I, but I it's a separate issue. I just clarified yeah. that Ms Bickett's got questions, Thank you. Right, which she wants to ask. So I'll leave that to the end because she's already had the opportunity to give us a deputation on, on the impact directly on this development. So it takes us now to, um, like I said, C1.4. Uh, and Mr Atanatis from 88.5. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City of Swan councillors and City of Swan staff for this opportunity. My name is Nick Jimmy Antartis. I am the Chairman and Presenter of Ellenbrook Community Radio 88.5 FM, which is run solely by volunteers and who are freely give up their time to engage with the broader community in a professional manner as possible. The station is regularly utilised by members of the councillors to reach out to the broader community. We are disappointed by the actions of the council to delay and challenge the allocation of funding to 88.5 FM. In our written application submitted in January of this year, seeking council support, we detailed the urgent need to replace our ageing and unreliable transmitter that has been operated for the past 15 years of service. We backed our request with evidence of the urgent need as the unit repeatedly fails during hot weather and we are currently only remain on air due to the cooler weather at the moment. Supporting evidence was provided to the Council, our technical logs, risk analysis and a third party assessment of the transmitter, all verifying that the transmitter is beyond its reliable service life. Expenditure on repairs to the transmitter has had significant negative impact on our cash reserves. And for the last failure, we have had to just hold in there a spare unit of equal age and poor condition. Meaning the next failure upon this may keep us off air for a long time or forever. The replacement of the transmitter must be done as soon as possible, as supply, transport and installation will be measured in months, not weeks, with all works to be completed, completed before the return of the hot weather. We don't understand how and why, after a unanimous vote to support the station granting $25,000 in full, that counter offers can be made such as an alternate accommodation of the payment being in incre increments made over two years. These proposals do not address and clearly urgent need to purchase a new transmitter today. At the last council meeting, it was suggested that the lack of engagement by station to agree to the MOU was shown to be unfound and incorrect. We are seeking less than 50 cents of per rate payer per year to the other grants offered to the other community groups. Without grant money, our station, your station, will cease to exist. Any questions? Thank you, Mr Aratidis. That was shorter than I expect. Questions, councillors? Councillor Kiley. Jimmy, thanks for coming in and doing the deputation, and I'm sorry that we, you have to, we have to put you through this 
scenario whereby some councillors want to rescind an, a motion they unanimously supported, I would like to know, does, this, does the station employ, have any employees at all? We are 100% run by volunteers. And those volunteers, are, are they, you know, uh, from other areas outside the city of Swan, or how many do you have that reside in, within the city of Swan? We have approximately 44 presenters in our station, and I would say around 50% would be around the Ellenbrook area, while the rest do reside outside of the Ellenbrook boundary within the city of Swan. And what, what makes you different from, say, a, a cricket club or a, a uh, you know, what, what distinguishes you what, from other people who, other groups that get funding within the city of Swan? I suppose you can utilise us a lot more, and I'm not here to knock any other sporting arrangement within the city of Swan. I've been part of a football club for a long time and, and did some great things there and had a lot of fun. But a radio station, we believe, can be used. It can be used in a, as a communication. It can promote events. It can help local businesses, as we've been doing the last two or three months, supporting local businesses. That's with for no fees, doing it free during the COVID-19 virus. It's also there to entertain, inform. It can be utilised as much as we need it. And we're all for ideas, and including including a City of Swan show. We're regularly every week where the councillors can come in and talk about events around the City of Swan. They can promote events, tell us about upgrades, exciting times. We're prepared to do that. Unfortunately, Mayor and councillors here today, Without this funding, there will be no such thing. One of the biggest fears of a presenter, if I can go on, and when you're taught and anyone worth their crust knows that dead air is the worst possible air. Dead air means that you're not being on, you haven't pushed your mic button on, you haven't put the CD player on. We've got one bigger fear, that if we don't get this funding from the City of Swan, we'll have dead air forever. Just to follow on, there was an announcement from the city or a press release put out that the, uh, I think, Allenbrook Arts uh, got funding to the value of $700,000. Um, that's within the area that the station operates. H how did that make you feel when one group or one, uh, you know, well, arts group got $700,000 funding? I believe it's over a number of years, but how did that make you feel? I wish the arts department all the very best. Our interest here today is 88.5 FM. It's good that we have an art gallery, you can go and have a look for all the art lovers, but that's not my concern here. Yep. All we're asking is for $25,000 to stay alive. And you say here that you give an assurance that the station will be providing the City of Swan with a complete and thorough acquittal of how the funding is spent. I mean, that was no different to what you were previously offering, I gather? Correct. Thank you. Thank you. I've got, I've got a quick question. You, you've got a grant pending with the Feds for exactly the same project, and that's due to be adjudicated in August, I understand. Mm -hmm. And from a discussion that I had with you and Mr Bishop earlier on, you indicated that that was um, the people that called those grants said you guys had done a, a tremendous presentation and it looked favourable. Okay, so they're still likely to go ahead. At this point, we don't know of any further funding coming our way. We're not guaranteed. We have received a Lottery West grant of $10,000. That was used to pay our rent in rears and for ongoing costs. The station costs us money every day to run. That $10,000 probably won't even see us out for the year, I'd say. I appreciate that, but the, but the, the pending on, for the Fed is still pending. That's still pending, but no guarantees. Yep, okay. Councillor Johnson. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, yeah, my question is about this piece of paper we've been given here. It says that um, the $25,000 will only be spent on technological upgrades to our ageing equipment. So is that replacing the ageing equipment or is it going to be a more powerful transmitter with a longer range? Legally, we can't go a longer range, although radio waves, as we know, does carry through the air. It's just to upgrade our ageing stuff. I mean, it's just gotten older. It's 15 years um, we did send a risk analysis through, so yeah, it's it's for a upgrade of our transmission and and running costs. And as as we stated earlier, it will be acquittal. There's no problem with that. But we're never going to receive the uh, transmission in Midland or South Guildford, for instance. Well, our our site is in Brigadoon. And 
I can guarantee you the transmission was that I listened to in Terrace Road in the city the other day was crystal clear. Councillor Johnson, oh, sorry, Councillor Henderson, you got a question? Uh, yes, thanks, Mayor. Um, uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, how many watts is the current transmitter? We're allowed a maximum of 200. 200. And how yep. many watts are you running? About 194. 194. That's pretty close to the mark. Mm -hmm. um, in the summertime, do you reduce your power to uh, maintain the transmitter on air? No, we don't, but we need a certain amount of power to run the station. So, um, unfortunately, I think it was about 12 to 15 times we did go down on air, which, uh, due to the heat mainly, but uh, I suppose with the age of it, she doesn't like operating in warm weather. And we have done a lot of stuff on that transmission site to try and rectify and keep the old girl running. Yeah, what I was trying to get to is that if you have the uh, transmit power, uh, you're going to have a significant reduction in heat and, and the transmitter would hold up, uh, you, is, is what I'm trying to get to. Yeah. So um, have you tried to operate the transmitter at, say, 100 watts or something like that to uh, maintain it on there? If we maintain it at 100 watts, it would be... People in the homes of Ellenbrook wouldn't get inside their homes of Ellenbrook, so it probably waste the presenter's time yeah. and the listener's time. But a risk analysis was sent out, and it probably explains everything in that. Yeah, fortunately, Mayor, I happen to understand how radio transmission works, being that I worked in it for many years. So uh, 100 watts would even still get into the city. So I was trying to get down to the, the, the fact that the transmitter could be reduced in power, and you'd still maintain a footprint throughout the city of Swan. Yeah? Correct. Thank you. Councillor Richardson. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Jimmy, quick question. So for those periods of time that the, the radio isn't transmitting and it cuts out in summer, what sort of time periods are you looking at losing air time well, for? Well, sometimes we're off air for about three or four hours by the time the, the notification comes through and then we head and send some workers out in the Brigadoon site. So, you know, we have been off air longer than that, but on average about three or four hours. Three or four seconds in radio land is a lot. Three or four hours is just deadly Last question, Councillor Scanlon. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Jimmy, I'm just wanting to ask you about this um, grant application with the federal government. So you'll hear about that in August. That's correct. So if you're not successful in that, and if this decision to um, give this funding to you is re um, revoked, what will happen to the station in August? What we're doing is we're not sitting on our hands waiting for this to come yeah, through. Yeah. Would it have been handy to have now? Yes, it yeah, would. Yeah. But the station has got volunteers that do events, and we've got event plannings. With the COVID-19, it's pretty hard to do any events. But now with that at Phase 4, we've actually got events planned in October, a karaoke quiz night, which we're inviting everyone of the City of Swan public to join us as a bit of a fundraiser to get us back going. I believe Bunning Sausage Sizzles are coming back as well, which is something we desperately need. And we're also seeking sponsorship. You're always got to try and improve. You just can't sit there with prayer hands waiting for to be given something. But in this motion, we are prepared to do a lot for so the City of Swan to get this. I understand. So, Jimmy, what I'm wanting to um, get at is that if this um, revocation motion is successful, I don't believe we can bring this back to Council for three months if you don't succeed in receiving federal government funding. And I just want to make sure that there's a three-month period where we cannot bring this back to Council. Um, are you going to survive? We hope so. So it's not known? It, it, it's, it's, it's a good chance we may not. Councillor Skinner, you'd be Thank aware you. that uh, uh, on the back of the revocation is an alternate motion to provide some funding if the federal government grant falls over. Councillor, that, that now takes us to 6.30. Ms Beckett, was it only questions that you had? Okay, well, given that I have to close the meeting at 6.30, can you email those questions to us tomorrow and I'll make sure you I get them answered? I emailed questions for council um, that had never got to council. So okay, so they, you, can you email them to me tomorrow personally and I'll sh make sure that they get answered for you? I'll be sure that you have okay, and they'll be there by the council meeting. The council meeting. Yep, okay, and I'll, I'll get them to the council meeting for you. So, Mr De Mayor, I'd like to move that we continue with the meeting. No, it's full of important that. things that need to be dealt with. Where the conditions were, I'm sorry, councillors, well, but it's a, made That's a motion. That's a motion, Mr Mayor. Seconded. Uh, those in favour? One, two, three, four, five. Those against? 
motion is lost. Thank you all for coming. Another motion, Mr Mayor. Can we please resume this agenda forum after the special meeting on Monday? I'll move in, move in like that. Well, councillors, those we've got to move and second those in favour of that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Any against? Question. Question. Quick one, council. We're running out of time. They've all been heard. Well, we've got quite a few questions of staff. We've got one person who's not completed, and I've got questions of staff, which well, need to be heard by forward, all the councillors. You can forward um, questions to staff at any time. Councillors, in regards to orders to be withdrawn. <laughs> yeah, okay, those in favour? One, two, three, four, five. What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, nine. The motion's carried. Okay, councillors, now called. Thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate that. Um, councillors, given the round of time, if you could forward by close of this tomorrow any items you with through withdraw for the next council meeting and your intent. And of course, move your alternate motions into count staff so they can be processed. Thank you very much.